Let me just share my screen here. All right, so welcome everybody to installment number 13, the Jenkins UX SIG online meetup. Um, today's session is going to be, frankly, really brief. Uh, we don't have a whole lot to share as I've, I've been away and offline a bit the past couple of weeks, so there isn't a whole lot new. Uh, but we do have a couple of cool items. First off, is there anybody, I think Philippe, if, if you if you uh, want to introduce yourself, and if not, that's okay too, but welcome either way. Um, I don't think we have any other uh, introductions this time around, but does anyone have any topics they'd like to add? Yeah, for sure. Uh, just feel free to hop in there and do that. Um, typically, we would actually start off with um, a sort of design deck and take a look at some either some concepts or some some actual working prototypes from Felix. Let me just check the comment here. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and we don't have one of the one of those this time around. So I wanted to highlight and Oleg, of course, you could speak better about this event than I could, but I wanted to highlight the UI UX Hackfest um, that is currently happening. Oleg, do you want to say anything about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so if you want, I can just uh, share my screen and uh, sure. show some notes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah, as you know, we are doing uh, Jenkins UI UX Hackfest. So it's a one week uh, long event where we invite all contributors to work on the user interface documentation or to spread the word about Jenkins. And uh, well, this event has started uh, on Monday. And uh, so far we have got uh, 26 contributors to different topics and counting. So, yep, uh, it's still an opportunity to contribute. And uh, during this Hackfest, we actually delivered uh, quite a number of stories already. So if you want to see the full list of stories, you can just go to this uh, uh, repository, UI UX Hackfest 2020. And, and uh, actually we can just, uh, uh, must up the filter. We can uh, just uh, search uh, for uh, reports. So we asked uh, all the users uh, to submit the issues. And right now I'm working on a blog post which summarize that, which would summarize that. So for example, if you want to talk about uh, user interface, we take enhancements and maybe some bugs later if we'll want. And uh, yeah, so, okay, it didn't work like that. So you can uh, find a number of uh, stories uh, which have been contributed and which have been officially recorded because we already noticed that uh, not everybody reports uh, uh, their contributions. So later we will uh, do have to do some GitHub uh, queries and other things. Uh, major highlights. So first of all, yeah, we have a first prototype of the dark theme working thanks to team. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a great presentation session today. It has been published a few minutes ago. So you can take a look, but um, uh, it's not only about that. So on the Monday, we have released um, a system read permission uh, support. So if you go to the Jenkins blog, um, here you can see that uh, there is read on the Jenkins configuration blog post, uh, which basically summarizes the weekly release. Uh, it enables three types of permissions, extended read uh, for jobs. Well, it was around uh, for a long time. Then there is agent extended read, it's just introduced in this weekly. And also system read, which was around, but it got a major update as well. So uh, we invited uh, contributors to start testing and there was a number of requests. Uh, there uh, was a number of enhancements submitted for this story. So you can find it here. Also, there are some uh, minor contributions here and there. For example, uh, Uli improved layout for auto gradient plugin. Uh, we have some improvements and footer of Jenkins and also other minor things here and there. Again, this list is not complete because uh, not everything was submitted so far. But still, we got quite a number of contributions in terms of uh, 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 pull requests. 
the same, uh, there are some bug fixes, uh, there is a lot of documentation changes. So yeah, the hackathon uh, is going pretty well uh, in that regards. And yeah, obviously we would like to have more contributions. So if you're watching this video, uh, there is still an opportunity to contribute and uh, get uh, cool t-shirts. Uh, This one is actually. So, uh, regarding the rest about the hackathon, we do a good progress about documentation, including plugin documentation and user documentation migration stories. So, it's uh, running well, quite well. Uh, we also have other project ideas uh, listed uh, for the UI. So, let, let me just show you the full list. So look and fill updates. We've got um, a few minor contributions here and there. Uh, same for accessibility. So there were some contributions, but uh, there is no team uh, which would be really focusing on this story at the moment. And uh, Tim, please correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, for tables to diffs migration, there is also no active testing right now. For development. Uh, no, we've had um a couple of people testing have done a little bit of testing on it mm -hmm. um i think we had three issues reported okay so yeah something is uh, going on but yeah definitely we would appreciate uh, more testing of the story because uh, it's an important change for user uh, for accessibility so for system read, yes, some changes, some demos. Uh, so yeah, it's going well. UI themes, yeah, we focused around the dark theme. Uh, we haven't really touched other stories yet, but maybe there will be contributors working on that. For pipeline visualization, there is a contributor who is working on uh, uh, improved uh, browsing performance for logs and pipeline. Um, but uh, yeah, the pull request hasn't been submitted yet. And for credentials management uh, team has submitted a number of patches. Uh, some of them have been approved, so hopefully we'll land them in the weekly. And for developer tools, uh, there were some contributions by Dennis Dictar in order to improve IntelliJ ID uh, plugin for Stepter. So there are some activities in all these stories, um, but yeah, uh, still uh, anything, everything requires uh, more contributions. Any additional comments from uh, Hackfest participants? We have a lot of them on the call. All right. Thank you, Oleg, for sharing. Okay. So, yeah, if you're interested uh, to know more about the, the sessions, again, please refer to this site. And there is also presentations where we accumulate uh, all uh, um, uh, materials. For example, uh, on Monday, Uli did a great session about beautifying plugin UIs with uh, JavaScript uh, components. Then uh, we had uh, sessions about migrating the docs, about system read permissions. Today, we had a section about uh, UI themes and uh, dark theme, which will be published uh, maybe in half an hour. So you, can, uh, you will be able to find all the information here. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And then, uh, Tim, I think you might have added this item, demo of dark mode. Is that something you wanted to, to chat about today? Yep. I was just going to do a demo of the dark mode um, just to show what we've gotten to so far. I can do that now or later, whichever works. Now is great if, if you're a port. Yeah, so. Awesome. Um, Okay. Um, so I just started this yesterday afternoon. Um, Looks good already. Yeah, so it's mostly functional. I've been trying to focus on the user side of it um, rather than the admin side of it. Um, and I've got quite a lot of that done, although I was just tidying up a bit of the admin side just because it's quite obvious. Um, just been trying to focus on having good enough contrast and just a nice ease to view UI, and it's been inspired by the um, Camelot camera. So, so the colors and the and the kind of contrast was initially taken from this Camelot theme that's been around for a few years, but has recently broken as part of the um, UX improvements. 
um, and some bits I didn't like, so I've taken them out. Um, but in general, that was the inspirations. And so it hasn't been updated in the last two and a bit years. So, so a few things have broken recently. Um, but this is what it's looking like currently. So it's got so the main screen is working. Um, we've got the, these pop-out menus are working. And all these, manage Jenkins. I hadn't seen that. Oh, so I usually use it on my bigger monitor and it doesn't scroll, so I hadn't seen that. Mm -hmm. um, searching is working. I'm not quite sure on the color, but the contrast wasn't working very well with the other color before. Haven't checked the screen, but it seems to be okay. So and the side panel is working okay. So um, selected and the active one and then a hover color when it's going over it. Uh, this one needs some work. I haven't intentionally looked, I haven't looked at this page before. Um, but then if I go to a pipeline screen, so I've got a pipeline with a number of stages, um, possibly some work needed, but apparently it normally has these, this weird blurriness. Um, so if I turn the theme off, um, Yeah, I remember we were discussing this blurriness something like five years ago when it was introduced. So it looks better with this coloring, but it's still there. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not as noticeable on this, um, on the default theme. So it probably needs something. Um, oh. so yeah, it looks quite funny. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's something he's doing there. Um, build logs are working. If you look through here. You've got your build log. I haven't tried build any, col nice. any colors in there. Yeah, I didn't do anything. It just just worked. Um, okay. Um, so what's in Manage Jenkins is what I was just doing just before this. Um, so you've got all your panels and that's all showing up, hover states. And then forms are mostly working, I think. Um, I've just taken all, all the button styling is all the same. I haven't changed any of that. Um, so using this grayish background, I've probably changed the search box to use the same color, but just wasn't quite working right before. Um, so the secondary button looks a bit funny. Um, yeah. So probably need a new color for the for the secondary one. That and bottom bar as well. Huh? well yeah. yeah, that just needs turning off for the color map color needs to match the background. So it should be quite straightforward. Just haven't looked at it yet. Um, yeah, but one day ago, this uh, theme just didn't exist. So yeah. I'm sorry, just that this is part of, this is going to be a simple themes kind of theme or not. Um, or, or how yes. will it work? So it's currently being installed through a simple theme. Yeah. Mm. yeah but, uh, uh, there yeah. are some differences under the hood. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't just built it how um, the traditional things have been built by modifying mm. this modifying the Jenkins CSS and and finding all the selectors that need changing and adding importance all over the place. Um, right. So it's actually modifying the this change Jenkins core to use CSS variables, um, which means that you can override the variables at runtime. So if I, I'll show you the theme. It's, um, so this is the theme here. Um, it's about 50, it's just about, it's about, it's one file with about 50 lines in it. And all it does is override variables and mostly mm. just, it's mostly got a few colors defined at the top and these colors are just used throughout, um, throughout the file. Um, and in certain cases, it's the, so it's the, these are just the primary brands colors defined in Jenkins. It's, we, I haven't overridden them, but I've changed certain text to use the brand colors. Um, but All you right. see there's only three colors defined throughout. Um, yeah. It's just contrasting them. Um, yeah. which has meant that I've had to send a 
I've got a progress open with Jenkins core at the moment um, to change from using SAS variables to CSS variables and um, and introduced a post CSS uh, preprocessor to uh, which adds the deep adds the color in at build time so that IE 11 works. Um, there's one thing that isn't won't work with that, which is the background image, um, but we just have to take a look at that on IE 11. Um, but so it's just it's basically just find and replace at and then adjust and then find a few more places. Um, I also fixed the uh, the password change button wasn't using the new button styling. Um, the color was slightly different. Um, it just it looked more prominent in dark mode. Um, so that's fixed. But that's nice. basically it. Um, so there's a repo for this in the Jenkins CI organization. It's called Dark Theme. And there's some instructions there on how to use it. I think so. Just need to run. So for now, so Oleg's currently working on a Docker image which comes out of the box with it. Um, but for right now, you need to just run this with the core PR tester and that will bring it up with the latest um, commit from PR tester. And then you need to install the simple theme plugin and just refer to the CSS file. Um, just Right, but you only need to do that because you've got unmerged PRs and once they're yeah. merged, it should be working via this the normal simple theme. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I have a staged pull request uh, towards uh, this repository. So basically what we need is uh, to have a more or less fixed version of the Jenkins core because I take uh, Jenkins work, uh, from incrementals version. And right now I'm using cold incrementals version, which is already incompatible with uh, the current version of the theme. Right. <laughs> so it's incompatible in a way that it just doesn't work. Uh, so once the uh, team finishes patching the Jenkins core, I will update and uh, it will be just click a button to get the instance running. And uh, the instance will include system read permissions, it will include manage permissions, it will include a bunch of uh, plugins, something like 100. Obviously, it won't include uh, BlueOcean, so BlueOcean uh, is not updated by this thing. If somebody That's wants to for try next it out, hack first. feel free to do so. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever seen the retro ocean? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll send the link to you. Yeah. I, yes, I have seen it. It's horrible. Yes, they had a lot of fun creating that horror. I haven't looked. I haven't looked at the login page yet either. It's got separate extension points. You have to implement a plugin, um, but that's a nice enhancement on top. Yeah. So I will be adding it to my demo uh, as once I fix uh, the simple theme. Awesome. Thank you, Tim, well, for sharing that. Round of really cool work. for that, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> let's, all, let's all burst each other's headphones by clapping simultaneously. Um, no, but really, really Thanks, cool Dave. stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think uh, next on the list here, uh, Wadak, you had a demo of the UX revamp of the script security plugin UI. Do you want to speak to that a little bit or share your screen or anything like that? Yeah, I can show my screen. I have something running normally. So I think, uh, tell me if you're seeing the screen. Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. It. So essentially just a rewamp of the user experience for that screen. So the in-process script approval, it's when you are doing some groovy script, but you are not an admin. And so you need to have approval from an admin to use your script. So the current version of the page, it's something like this. So it's a bit horrible in terms of experience, in terms of uh, visual experience, but also in terms of feature, because you cannot, once you have approved the script, revoke the permission you propose to that script. So the proposal is to have something like this with multiple tabs. So that was a very good feedback I received from uh, Joe about the separation between, uh, between uh, tabs instead of just the, the feature. And so you have with the, the table, you can still see the content of the script by expanding a bit the, the stuff. 
and you can see more information about where it's coming from in terms of context. So that was already the case in the previous version. You can see the context here, for example. But what I'm adding here is especially for the approved script. In case you already approve something, you are keeping the information. So all the metadata are saved in the disk. And so you know what you approved in the past and you can evaluate if it's still relevant or not for the current status. So it means that for my instance, these approval are just completely useless because nobody is using them at the moment. There is no metadata, it means there is no usage. If you are using them, you can see new date, the number of views since the introduction of metadata. And with that information, you can have a more expert view on what is expected to be used and what could be just revoke. Because if you want in terms of security, the number of approval you already have is a bit also the size of your security all in a sense. Because if you have thousands of scripts that are approved there, potentially one of them is dangerous but you don't know exactly the status. So with that new feature, you can reduce as much as possible the list of things you have approved, normally up to the number of pipeline you have and not like uh, 100 times the number of pipeline I think so it is. The four remaining tab there are still the same as the current version. I just transpose the, the script and the, the CSS. It's something that will be done either in the future or in that PR if I have some time. It's more about the things are working. It's just not as perfect as it could be because in that approved script, you can revoke individually the different things with that button. While currently you need to revoke everything or revoke by hash only. And with the hash, you have no information. So you are just randomly pick the things you want to revoke. So that's a bit uh, what I wanted to demo there. The PR is ready for different uh, review, approval, and things like this. It's still a work in progress in a sense, because there is a lot of things to do, especially about the wording. I received multiple comments on the different sentence and things like this. So still in progress. And uh, if you have some feedback, some uh, request of feature and things like this, do not hesitate. Really awesome, um, dramatic improvements to the usability on that, that UI. So really cool. Thank you again for sharing that. All right, that brings us to the end of our list for today. Uh, pretty short meeting this time around. Um, did have a reminder there for, for those of you who have not previously joined on the SIG call. Uh, we keep uh, everything documented from these meetings in our agenda uh, document, of course. And then, oh, I just realized I'm not sharing. Well, no big deal, but um, let's see here. We keep everything documented in terms of meeting notes here, excuse me, in the agenda document. And we also have the UX uh, SIG resources so that whenever we have uh, design decks or other things like that, uh, they're all linked here uh, if you wanna refer back to them in the future. Uh, we have our meeting notes here as well. And I think that brings us to the end of our call for today, unless anybody else has something to share. All right. Thank you all very much for, for the chat and for the great updates and let's yeah. keep it going. Maybe one quick question. Sure. So I'm working on another roadmap update. So last week we added accessibility stories there and uh, probably we could add um, uh, Jenkins dark theme there as a separate item. So uh, from uh, other topics, uh, does anybody have something else you would like to add to the roadmap? Yeah, for example, script security revamp would be probably qualifying, uh, but yeah. So if you have something like that in uh, plan, um, let's discuss that because it's great to keep as many UX stories there as possible. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, let's keep it let's keep it updated. If anyone thinks of anything else as we move forward, of course. And I guess that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, special thank you for Oleg for the Hackfest organization. That's really nice. Uh, right. Doing my best. And I wrote some code today. Right. Beautiful.
Beautiful work, Vadek. I'm looking forward to using that script security work. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Vadek, for that. What, have you tested it with configuration as code and script approvals, by the way? I don't even know if the initial plugin is working at all. <laughs> okay. But that's something that could be interesting, yeah. Uh, there was configuration as code support, which was added uh, six months ago or so, or maybe yeah, last summer. Uh, so it was working in principle, but uh, it, it, it works. People use it, um, but just whether it works with your changes, whether it clears that information you need or anything. Yeah, I will check if there is something need to be a tweak a bit there. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. For me, the best script security user experience is not having anything in script security. Uh, but, yeah, we, uh, we don't we don't use it. But... Yeah, because once you need script security, it's likely that something is wrong on your instance. Uh, but yeah, yeah. there are we use get, cases for that. We get tickets and people are asking for us to approve things, but it's always because they have typos in their Jenkins file. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one way of catching that. Yeah. Well, it could be reported more obviously, but they're not trying to do, they're not trying to do that. Yeah. There's, there's no reason for us to have it. But. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna step off here. I'm, yeah, wait, I'm just kind of waiting for one more topic to rise, and then there'll be four of us, and then there'll be two of us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Have a, Bye. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Still recording. <laughs> <laughs>